Last week, I was having lunch with my work buddies. I had ordered some fresh Kerala parotta and egg curry, and as is customary during our lunches, we often share our food. So I offered this mouth-watering bread to them, but they all refused it, saying it is maida. Not wanting to have a debate over food, I proceeded to relish the parotta, secretly feeling glad that I didn't have to share, and that I can have my fill. of this appetizing food but i thought to myself that i will expose this misconception through pale blue thoughts as i have heard this misunderstanding raised by many others throughout my life in fact there is a strong anti parotta campaign in kerala whose strength keeps going up and down over the years so why this collaboratively for maida so today i will attempt to explain the science behind this mistaken belief that maida is harmful Welcome to yet another episode of Pale Blue Thoughts where the maid of honor is Maida. Maida is a white flour made from wheat. It is called maida in the north of India and in the south it is known as maida maida is used extensively for making fast foods and bakery goods such as pastries bread several varieties of sweets and traditional flat breads including the famous flaky kerala parotta in the north maida is often used in flat breads such as naan kulchas and tandoori roti batura yet and the fluffy deep fried leavened bread is made with maida and yogurt In western cooking too maida is used in many food items such as bread biscuits noodles pancakes pastries pizza and pie crusts owing to this wide variety of uses maida is sometimes labeled and marketed as all purpose flour though it is different from all purpose flour for us to understand whether maida is harmful or not we need to first understand what it is and how it is made because most often the making process is what gives maida its bad name maida is essentially polished wheat wheat like rice is essentially a grain which humans consume as a staple food wheat rice millet maize etc are all examples of cereals which are basically any grass cultivated for the edible component known as grain any grain consists of three parts the bran the germ and the endosperm the bran is usually the outer covering of the grain here are two pictures of how wheat and rice bran looks like next is the germ the germ is the reproductive part that germinates to grow into a plant it is the embryo of the seed what is left is the endosperm the endosperm is actually the nutrition provider for the seed and it contains starch oils and proteins a typical example of an endosperm is the coconut meat or the white part of the coconut that we consume flour is produced from grains by grinding grain between stones as in olden days today stone ground usually means that the grain has been ground in a mill when you make flour using all of the bran endosperm and germ it is called the whole grain flour and when you remove the bran and germ you get refined flour atta which is commonly used to make rotis and chapatis is a whole grain flour whereas maida is a refined flour let us concentrate on wheat flour which is the topic of discussion wheat and rice are the most commonly used grains to make flour in india flours contain differing levels of the protein gluten Gluten is yet another chemical compound which has received a very bad name recently but I will address that separately in another video. So the main wheat flours used in Indian cooking are the whole grain flour called as atta and the refined version of the same called maida. They are basically the same. Grain minus bran and germ is endosperm and that is the content of maida. In fact, if you are really scared about the contents then atta 2 contains the same endosperm that maida contains but you often see maida being replaced by atta noodles and wheat parotta etc 
They do contain the essence of maida. The whole grain consists of a lot of elements like protein, carbohydrates, oils, etc. Whereas the processed form of endosperm of wheat is basically carbohydrates. Our body requires carbohydrates for our energy requirements as they break down into glucose which is used by our cells for their energy needs. But there is no question that the intake of carbohydrates or glucose needs to be regulated. Your intake should be matched with the amount that you burn during any physical activity. If you are a person who prefers the bed than the treadmill, then the carb content should be controlled. Now let us see how maida is prepared. Maida is made from endosperm, the starchy white part of the grain. The bran is separated from the germ and endosperm which is then refined by passing through a special sieve. Although naturally yellowish due to pigments called as xanthophylls present in wheat, maida is typically bleached either naturally due to atmospheric oxygen or with bleaching agents. Why is this done? One reason is to make it soft and fluffy which is essential if you want your cakes and bread to be so. The second reason is to preserve the endosperm. If kept for a long time, the pigment called xanthophyll normally oxidizes in the atmosphere and turns white. Since wheat is a grain that gets stored for a long time before use, we need to preserve it well and for faster processing, we bleach it artificially. Now here is where maida gets its first bad reputation from. The use of the bleaching agent called benzoyl peroxide. For people who are chemophobic, the word chemical itself is an alarm sign. I have said this many times before. The word chemical is not something that should raise your blood pressure. Water, common salt, air, everything around you is chemical. But people still have this fear for the word chemical. People often attribute the word chemical to only those things that are made in labs, but conveniently forget that everything in nature exists in the form of chemicals. There is no difference in the chemicals created in labs and the chemicals found freely in nature. But the chemophobics conveniently forget that point. Anyways, let us see how dangerous benzoyl peroxide really is. Benzoyl peroxide is a chemical compound which is used in medication and in dentistry to whiten teeth and even for water disinfection. It is also on the WHO's list of essential medicines and is an over-the-counter drug in the United States. So this chemical is not toxic within stipulated doses or below its LD50 values. When heated, benzoyl peroxide breaks down producing benzoic acid and oxygen, neither of which is very toxic. For people who are chemophobic, it may be noted that benzoic acid occurs naturally in appreciable amounts in many plants and berries and its salts are used as approved preservatives. So once the endosperm of the wheat plant is bleached using benzoyl peroxide, which is an approved and scientifically tested bleaching agent, it is ground to make maida. If at all any traces remain, when the maida is used for cooking, it breaks down into benzoic acid and the amounts are very, very small. So the bleaching process most certainly does not cause any harm to humans. Next is the propaganda that it does not contain any nutritional value. This is neither right nor wrong. Since most of the fibrous material which is present in the bran is removed, maida does not have any fiber content. But so does eggs and dairy products such as milk and cheese. But does anyone say no to eggs or milk? It must be noted that food items containing maida are not consumed alone, but often with vegetables chickpeas, lentils, eggs, meat, chicken, etc. For example, you don't often eat bread alone. You usually make a sandwich which contains leafy vegetables or egg, etc. A pizza is never eaten with only the base. A naan or kulcha is often eaten with paneer, chicken or some other vegetables. A batura is often eaten with chole or chickpeas and a kerala prota is eaten traditionally with? You know what I mean. Most of the side dishes that you consume with a food item made of maida are usually rich in proteins and vitamins, so you don't need to worry about your daily intake. Yes, 
It is possible that the side dish you consume could have an effect on diabetes or cholesterol such as taking red meat in excess. But it has been proved that products made from maida have a moderate glycemic index and glycemic load which are factors which affect the buildup of diabetes or increase of bad cholesterol. So when you eat up food containing maida along with other food items which provides vitamins, proteins, etc., the body definitely gets the nutrients it needs through the meal. And since maida is mainly carbohydrates, it gives good energy for the human body during the day. And since it is a heavy meal, you are not likely to eat too much of it anyways. And you most certainly won't be having food made from maida four times a day. However, it is true that if you just go by nutritional content, the endosperm definitely stands below the bran and the germ. Take a look at the nutrition content of the three here. So, it definitely is not a waste product as claimed by the Mehda haters. So the propaganda that it is a useless, fiberless food is also not quite true. Another false claim made by the people who are out and about against Mehda is the adding of the chemical alloxan in Mehda. First of all, alloxan is not a product added to Mehda but it is formed as part of the bleaching process and it gets broken down in the process itself. So far, no alloxan has been detected in any food made using maida during studies and tests conducted even on street foods in India. The reason the fear mongers state is that alloxan is known to cause type 1 diabetes mellitus in rats and some rodents. In fact, it is true that labs do give alloxan to rats to study effects of diabetes in them. But this has been proved only in rats used as lab animals and not in humans. Studies that have been done on humans clearly suggest that alloxan does not cause diabetes in humans. It also does not affect the beta cells in humans as claimed by many Mehta haters. Many animals and humans have different sensitivity to the same food. You may crave for chocolates, but try giving it to your dog and see. Well, actually, don't give it to your dog. It is toxic for them. Another allegation is that they claim that maida will stick to the intestinal walls because it is sticky when combined with water. They claim that this powder is used to stick bills and posters on walls and is used as an adhesive, so it can cause cancer in the long run. It can be used as an adhesive in one of its forms. That doesn't mean it does the same job inside our bodies. For example, warfarin is a very commonly used in rats as poison. They cause internal bleeding in rats as the chemical can thin the blood. But the same compound is used as a medication in humans due to the same property of thinning the blood to treat blocks in our blood vessels. The only thing is that the dose is controlled and it does not kill the human. This is just pure fear mongering and lack of scientific temper in action. For people who toil hard physically at work, maida is definitely a boon as it provides good energy to your body to overcome the hard work that you do every day. But then again, if you google maida on Google, you will still get a lot of links which claim that it is harmful and most of them are reputed newspapers and media who have succumbed to the common perception of the general public. This gets taken up by a lot of YouTubers and food bloggers who just want to feed into the general perception of the public to increase their views and revenue. For them, it is only TRP, views and likes that matter. Whether their content is actually science or pseudoscience doesn't mean anything. But I wanted this channel to be different. If I present something, it would be scientific with evidence from studies presented in reputed journals, else it will never appear on pale blue thoughts. I had earlier done an episode on the global fear of Ajinomoto or MSG and today it is Medha. Another time it would be gluten. So go through the right articles to find out the truth and enjoy this harmless ground endosperm in moderation. Medha is not harmful as it is made out to be. So do enjoy the cakes, pastries, breads, pizzas, biscuits and samosas. But don't forget to balance it with the right amount of physical activities. So let me go and enjoy my parota while all of you digest what you have just heard.